The most difficult task for me to overcome was my own fear, to be honest. Um, I was scared people wouldn't like the movie and I thought maybe if they didn't like the movie then this whole effort was a waste of time. <laughs> The film is about, first and foremost, I suppose, the, the, the life of, of, a, of an opera singer, of a, of a, of a boy who, who, who t turned opera singer. But more than that, the film is about an opera singer who's a dad, who has a wonderful family, and whose son, eventually, decides to make a film about his father's life and work, which is... I think the most remarkable thing I personally can think of and something I never imagined would happen. Many, many things have happened in my life that I didn't imagine, but this is surely one of the top, <laughs> top five. <laughs> when I originally started making the movie, it was more about my dad's life because it's such an amazing heroic story, you know, a young boy sings in a tiny little village in Porth Leven and gets taken by a lady from London and taught music and then he makes it to the big stage of the world. So that was like the original story where I knew, okay, this is quite a, an amazing story my dad has. I'll sing you a song of Porth Leven on the shores of the ancient Mount Spain where fishermen tell of their catches and mermaids to gamble and play. I'll sing of the port with twin harbors and its clock tower that points to the sky. The sight of the baskets of pigeons as the fisher girls go. Swinging by. And of course I know about his personality, I knew that he would be a, a fun guy to listen to and also at the time the movie was being made I became a father myself so I thought okay this is a great opportunity to ask my dad some questions that I'd never got to ask when I was growing up because he was off singing a lot in my life so. Where would you be today without opera in your life? Wow. Hard to know, really, isn't it? That, that's impossible to know. But almost probably in Cornwall, where I was born. I was a, a home-loving boy. I liked it there, you know. And obviously, when I'm a teenager, I wasn't even asking him the questions either. It's not just because he was gone. I was a teenager. I was living my own life. And now that I'm becoming a dad and growing into being a man, I guess there was lots of things on my mind. And being able to combine that with the trip to Cornwall and to the, his heritage, to his roots, and to show how, yeah, how much I love him and the amazing career he's had, I thought it would just make a, a good movie. <laughs> uh, we made it to the wrestling fields. I want to know why you brought me here. Well, because I heard a story about how you were conceived here. I heard that story too. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that young Johnny Boy here was conceived in this, in this area here. I mean, could have been here. Whatever tuft of grass it was, I don't know. Quite an amazing place for a life to begin. Here. Ever since I was in film school, I thought my dad is just an amazing person not just on a human level, but also as a character for a movie. I, I, I knew it would be a great documentary somehow. I knew if I went to where he came from, we'd have the amazing scenery, we'd have him with his life story. And if we add in that aspect of me as a son searching for certain questions, uh, certain answers in life, I thought, yeah, it could work. But I was never sure, to be honest. I mean, um, I'm very relieved now that I, I think the film's quite good, but I don't know what other people are going to say. And uh, I'm always my my own most hardest critique, so I didn't enjoy making it a lot of the time. It was a struggle, but um, 
yeah, I guess some of these things have to be done. <laughs> when I originally started filming it, I was still a student and um, my dad was still singing a lot, very much in big theaters. So at that stage, it wasn't as easy to go into his life, personal life deeply because he had a reputation to lose. He, he was still, I would say, the icon on stage. And my mother was always very worried that if the film got too personal and we talked about too much of his problems in life, that that might not be good for his career. When he approached me, I didn't say no, 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 but to be perfectly honest, I had no concept that it would go as far as it's gone. And at that time, I filmed him a lot on stage and we filmed lots of things backstage, but we never really went personal and deep into his personal life. And then when he retired, that was when I realized, okay, if we do this now, we can actually travel together. He has more time. He's not always on stage and he's probably going to be able to talk more openly about the difficulties of being an opera singer and the difficulties of being a father and some of the struggles that he went through. And that, was, that, that proved to be true. I thought he'll trouble me a little bit with it every now and again and it will die a death, as we say in English. Well, it certainly did not do that. And then I did become passionately interested in him doing the film. I have to say much more, I mean, I loved it when he was with me, uh, you know, I would, I would get an engagement and a couple of times in my life um, uh, uh, we said together, uh, maybe th that, that's enough for the film. And then a really interesting engagement would come in and Lawrence would say, oh, I have to go there, I have to be on this one, you know, I, I, it'd be great to get some footage there too. So <laughs> that's how it proceeded. We went for two weeks on a, car, on a road trip. We drove from Germany to Cornwall with the film team. And it was a very intense time that we had. And that, I think that made the movie even better because we had, this, we had this road trip going where no one could leave, no one could just go home. We had to make this movie together. And uh, yeah, and, and that also, like I said, um, the freedom my dad had being able to look back rather than still being in his career meant that he could be more open as well with the camera rolling and talk about things that maybe he wouldn't have wanted to talk about when he was still uh, in LA doing Siegfried, for example. So where do you think you take the energy from that inspires you to do what you do? <laughs> Gosh, from wherever corner I can get it from, I suppose. I, I don't know. It would be wonderfully romantic to say that I I think about the rolling sea in Port Leven and then I'm energized. <laughs> but yet, you know, when I'm here and when I remember how I grew up, I'm sure that that left very deep rooted feelings, you know, that you can call on in one's professional life. Certainly, you know, operas that I did that were to do with the sea and some of them were. It was lovely to have my childhood memories of Port Leven. <laughs> When it came to our filming technique and style, um, we always knew where we were going to film and I in my mind roughly knew what I wanted to talk about and obviously I would written questions down on a piece of paper but I tried to forget them and I didn't show them to my dad first. Obviously we spoke a lot, especially when we were driving to Cornwall, we spoke about so many issues. He knew exactly what we, what we were going to kind of dive into but I never sort of rehearsed anything no it was uh we'd say okay we'll meet tomorrow at nine o'clock on the wrestling fields and then we're just going to film he very much wanted to have a level of spontaneity i mean obviously i knew he was going to ask me questions about my about my my work you know i, I and and technically how i achieved the things i did um the more the more intimate things and the more personal things were not discussed um, uh, there, there was, uh, there, the, 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 but there were one or two things that, that didn't work terribly well that I believe we went into a studio and corrected a little bit. So those little things were, were, were if you like, scripted, yeah. But the majority of it not. My camera crew also, we, we discussed we're not going to, um, we're not going to rehearse, we're not going to, um, you know, frame the mise-en-scene for hours. It's more of a spontaneous kind of 
uh, style that we wanted to go for. Obviously, there were some really nice images in there, and my cameraman, Justin Peach, did a great job. I also did some of the B-reel shots because Cornwall is so beautiful. Obviously, you want to have some of that in there, but whenever my dad and me are on camera, it was unrehearsed, and we just tried to let it flow as much as possible, yeah. So this is the legendary spot that you were found swimming in the ocean then? It is, just over there. I love to have a swim and uh, I used to have a little sing. I don't think I sang terribly loudly, but uh, loud enough to be heard anyway. The rest, as we say in the business, is history. <laughs> Can you remember how it felt when you were actually with Marjorie Fogg for learning to sing, the, 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 the first songs you were learning, the first music she was teaching you? Wow, it was, it was, it was magic. It was, uh, it was like another world. It was deeply exciting, and, uh, uh, and, I, and I don't know why. I mean, I don't, I, I don't remember thinking then, I am going to make, I'm going to do this on some kind of world stage. But it was just the opportunity, just make, just, you know, making the music was just, was just wonderful. It was, it was very exciting. I loved it. Well, it's such a magical tale. Your dad, young boy swimming in the harbour in Port Levin, makes it to the... Vienna State Opera. Yes, indeed, indeed. I guess I always looked up to you as well. Just... The Wiener Staatsoper. Yeah. I, oh, bless you. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, 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 I don't know that I'm lookable, upable, <laughs> as it were. But uh, uh, I, you know, I did what I could, and uh, I did it with a lot of love. And you, in my life, and my dearest family. Without you, I, I would not be the man I am. That is without a single doubt. I believe that firmly. My mum, at first, did not want to be in the movie at all. She's a lady who did so much for us as a family and was always in the background. She gave up her career to be a mother, and that was an active decision she took. It's not like she had to, she really wanted to, but she did give up a lot for us. And uh, without her, my dad would never have become the singer he became, and without her, I would not have got the education. And so we're very, I'm very thankful to her but she never wanted to be in it. She was always like the lady in the background and... Uh... And I was accepted for the Royal Ballet School and that's where I was going. And then my parents decided, go to South Africa. <laughs> so I didn't go. And a lot of our family were singing in the chorus in uh, Johannesburg. So I just joined the family and went and sang in the chorus. Started singing. And yes, I was going to be a, a famous opera singer instead, a ballerina. That's what I was dreaming of. So I went back to London, went to the London Opera Centre and uh, had a solo career in London before uh, John and I met and fell in love. I told him he needed a strong woman to look after him so he should marry me. So he said, all right then. <laughs> yeah, she was just a bit too shy, really, and she didn't really want to talk about the difficult issues in life as well. She, she likes to stay positive, and I, I don't think she understood why I would want to talk about that, because she likes movies that are more feel-good, kind of happy movies. Um, but then when we came back from Cornwall, and a good friend, of, who I'm thankful to, said to look, Roxanne, you can't not be in this movie. If you're not in this movie, all the viewers will think you're dead. And then she was like, oh, you're right. So she came to me one day and she said, look, okay, Lawrence, I'll give you one interview, that's all. So that's why there's only one interview. So visually, obviously, we knew Cornwall is pretty much a painting wherever you point the camera. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful landscapes, beautiful oceans. Um, so I knew, from, uh, me being a cameraman myself, that we would have some beautiful cinematic scenes there and that if we used the drone, I really wanted to just capture that beauty of Cornwall so that the viewer understood this is where my dad's from. Um, so we've got that side of the cinematography, but then the other side, the interviews, we didn't really like much. We did, you know, a little bit here and there, but it's more sort of realistic documentary style of filming the interviews. And that combined kind of makes the look of the film. And then we also have the, the retrospective, the old photography that 
with good help from a great friend in Frankfurt who has a company called Map Media GmbH. They did the animation sequences, uh, and that brings in quite a lot of production value where we look back on his career and instead of just showing a photo, it's animated and there's some nice um, um, yeah, levels to it, makes it more deeper. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think the main discussion, the most important discussion I had with my cameraman, Justin Peach, was yes, we want to make a cinematic movie, so we don't necessarily want to be up close on the eye, you know, because we're going to have it up on the big screen. But we also, at the same time, don't want it to be too scripted. And we don't want... We had an important discussion on the first day. It was like, look, obviously, if I told you to come around that corner three times, the third time I'd get the best shot. But we don't want to do that. We might live with a, with a, with a scene that is a little bit rough on the edges, but it's the first time. And, it, and we'll, you can feel that as a viewer sometimes. I don't remember a single regret. A moment where I thought, oh, what am I doing? Why have I done this? Oh, I wish I wasn't here. Yeah, so it'll always be costly in every way, mentally, physically, emotionally. But it will become an enjoyment, that sense of passion and release and um, freedom, freedom of being. You know, just saying, here I am, this is it, now, los. How much pain and sacrifice do you think it's worth to go through to live your passion? I can't quantify that. I truly can't. I mean, I've been through plenty, and I've been through wonderful, wonderful moments of sheer joy and heaven, you know, delicious moments when all of us, you know, a contract opens up. Simon Rattle says, I want John Trelevin to sing Tristan for me, uh, for me. you know. Uh, those moments are, are fantastic and wonderful. Um, but uh, I can't really quantify the other. It, it, the, it's, it's what happens, isn't it, really, on your journey. There may be, for some people, would come a moment when they would say, that's it, this is too much, or I, I'm not allowing this in my life anymore. I never reached that point. So when it comes to the music concept, at first I actually did have a composer do some rough drafts, but I didn't quite feel them and I, it wasn't going in the right direction. And I always knew that I wouldn't really need them because we, we have such great music that my dad had already recorded. And um, we did use some extra music, but not very much. So um, yeah, I pretty much early on knew that it would be nice to have a composer, but it wouldn't be a big problem if we didn't. And like I said, we tried a composer and it wasn't going in the right direction. So then I just said, look, we don't need it. We're going to use uh, the recordings and we're going to use, um, we actually found some music that was already produced that wasn't produced, especially for the film. Like if I was doing a, a story about somebody else's father or maybe even about, I don't know, a historic movie about a king or whatever, then I wouldn't be so emotionally attached to it. And as a filmmaker, that feels more comfortable. But doing something about my own father, obviously, and me in the movie as well. I'm normally used to being behind the camera, you know, I'm a cameraman. So the step to go with my dad together in front of the camera, it kind of scared me what people would think about it for sure. And uh, like I, I'm, I'm my biggest critique. So when I was editing it together with the wonderful editor, Melanie Dietz, there wasn't a day where I was not worried, to be honest. I would be lying to say it was a, an amazing, happy experience. It was quite a struggle. I mean, the journey to Cornwall with my dad was amazing, and uh, we've already agreed that we want to do it again, but without cameras this time, and, and we had, but we had such a great time together, and that was worth so much. But editing was, was, yeah, it was difficult because we had so much footage, like the style we shot, like I said, we didn't script anything, so we had hours and hours and hours of interviews. So the, the version of the cinema now is 90 minutes long. Um, and that was obviously the kind of length we were aiming for, for a cinema version. We did have a two hour version before that, but I'm kind of happy that we cut it down. I don't think it, I mean, obviously there's some scenes that I miss, but at the same time, when you look at the whole package, it was just too long and certain things were too, yeah, just didn't fit in there quite well. So this is definitely the cut for the cinema. And we also have a 60 minute cut for TV, which has already been sold to SVR and they're gonna screen that at the end of this year. And actually making that, I thought, oh, it could be difficult to cut out half an hour. Um, but it worked, and I didn't miss too many things. There's less music, less performances, so opera fans might think, oh, that's a shame. 
but the, the real core of the story is still in the 60-minute version too. God is the person I look to for guidance in all that I do. I felt the presence of God most definitely in my life, most definitely. This has been like a whole body experience and quite remarkable in that sense. And I have felt deeply, absolutely, that, that I was in the presence of the Holy Spirit. I need spiritual guidance in all I do. And I find that in the words of the Old and the New Testament. And it brings me a, an inner peace, which I'm profoundly grateful for. Some people would say that church or religion is just a crutch for, for the weak or for people with weaknesses. And that if they were to, you know, study science more or be more self-confident, they wouldn't need it. Mm. I just wonder with you, because you are such a strong believer, how you, how, what made you so sure about it or what makes you so strong in your belief? The acceptance of my own weakness, the acceptance that through my own experience that without the crutch, if somebody wants to call it a crutch, let them call it a crutch, it's okay with me. For me, it's this all-encompassing love of the forgiving God that when I screw up, that if I, if I ask for forgiveness, I will receive it. I'm a very emotional guy. Uh, I, my emotions live very close to the surface with me. Um, and being back at home in the place where I was born, where I had many wonderful memories, but also a lot of not so wonderful and darker memories, was not necessarily very easy, let's put it that way. Being with my beloved son was, was wonderful and watching his eyes and he loves the place. So the, uh, that, was a, that brought a freshness. But in all honesty, there are moments in the film where Lawrence delves very deeply into the things that affected m my private life. And some of those were extremely painful and difficult to deal with, yeah. but. It was done, it was done with, with a lot of care and love. So that made it possible, I think. Yeah. My film is about, I'd say the most important message is that family is the most important thing in life. And that you make big sacrifices for your career if you are that kind of person, but that will never give you the same level of happiness that family can give you. Mm -hmm.